Yeah. Like, I really, I was reading a book about the BDS movement around, about Palestine and, mm -hmm. and uh, Israel. And the propaganda that uh, Hutus were getting regarding the Tutsi people in 1994 and before the genocide happened is so much like the propaganda that the uh, people of Israel have gotten about the people of Palestine. Like, the dehumanizing language... The just lack of education about the humanity that th of those that are being killed by their military. And, I mean, and uh, there's a slight difference, I guess, in the fact that, like, uh, the Hutu people were killing their neighbors mm -hmm. who were Tutsi. That they knew. Yeah. That is people they there's know. Feminist family? Oh, we already started. Okay. I guess so. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Hi, everybody. We are so happy to be with you again. Welcome to the Feminist Family. I am Pamela. And I'm Cory. Call me Pam. <laughs> Call him Cory. <laughs> we are the Feminist Family and we are very happy to be back again with you, like every two weeks. Thank you very much if you've been uh, watching all other, uh, our other videos. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about what? Lots of things. Lots we of talked about um, our vision of respect. Yeah. We talked about um, our ways of uh, citing the victims. Yeah. Um, and many other videos that you will see, we post every two weeks. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Yep. Uh, tell us what you think. So, okay. what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think that it's uh, poignant and uh, relevant for us to talk about Rwanda and the genocide of the Tutsi people in mm -hmm. Rwanda in 1994, which is exactly 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Um, we have uh, many people uh, following us from uh, Rwanda or uh, Rwandan uh, following us from all over the, the world. Thank you very much. I ca I'm, I'm your sister from Burundi. So Burundian and Rwandans, we are um, very similar. So uh, while we are uh, remembering the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi of Rwanda um, mm. since uh, April 7, I guess it was a good idea that we talk about it because um, this is also something, a topic that concerns the feminist family and yeah. feminists in general yeah. and us in particular. Um, so what have we done this year well, so far? Yeah, I mean, we went to the event at uh, Wellspring Victory Church. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went uh, with the uh, Rwandan community mm -hmm, of Regina mm -hmm. because we live in uh, Regina, yeah. Saskatchewan, in Canada. And uh, we, we were invited to watch a movie. Yeah, a documentary about, uh, I guess, the history, some of the prehistory even of Rwanda and, uh, yeah, this, the ethnic cities and some of the colonization that was going on mm -hmm. i think it's uh it, it would be good if we put the link of uh, that video sure. uh, it was uh, by uh, samuel eshimwe who's a, a filmmaker uh randan and um it was uh pretty interesting because it's something that we've been uh, talking about it's really crazy what happened there yeah yeah right? yeah and like like you say like we've talked about this many times over the years about how the separation between Hutu and Tutsi and Twa uh, are kind of just arbitrary. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. no actual, like, ethnicities there, even though, like, and the ethnicities were kind of, like, made up. Mm -hmm. It's something, really, that was uh, made up um, during the time of uh, colonization. And um, in that documentary, we were saying, like, uh, um, Ishimo Samuel went really to the roots of it yeah. uh, in Germany and also in, um, in Belgium. Yeah. And um, what would you say, what shocked you more, uh, most in that documentary? Well, I just it seems like uh, how they took, like, what... So the terms Hutu and Tutsi, they used to mean like the rich and the poor. 
in yes. a sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because the Tutsi were just the people who had land and cattle. Mm-hmm. And the Hutu were just the people who didn't. Mm-hmm. And so then Europeans, the Belgians and the Germans, they came and they, they like, made plaster casts of people's faces and, like, uh, stole skulls out of the graves of people in order to and measure people's facial features and whatnot, in a, like phrenology, full on like pseudoscientific bullshit mm-hmm. to prove that these were actually ethnicities and not just a class difference mm-hmm. when it was just a class difference. <laughs> yes, it's uh, really interesting to notice that um, it's not something that were that were at that moment done only on Rwanda, right? It's, uh, it's, it's really the period where they were talking about like uh, the race theory, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. The idea that white people were uh, superior to right. um, other races. So this was a way, actually, in the black uh, people uh, in the black community yeah, to try to also uh, like. Uh, Put categories like yeah. What did they call it? It was a, a particular theory name. Yeah, they called it like the the because the theory was that the Tutsis were closer to white people yes. than the Hutu. Yes, yes. And uh, in that documentary, they were saying uh, it was based on uh, uh, the fact that um, they when they were exploring, uh, they noticed that um, there were a certain knowledge. And um, they were like, no, there's no way like uh, uh, black people ha- have, have done this. <laughs> they must be part white. They must be <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it, but it's, it's, it's pretty no, stupid. No, no, it's stupid. It's incredibly it's, stupid. Uh, it's, it's pretty stupid. And um, and you you can feel, um, I really invite anyone uh, who's watching our, our videos like uh, to go in the link and... Um, it's it's an important piece of history, yeah. Um, because uh, it is something that I don't know if do you think that at the moment when they were like uh, putting like a uh, um, categorizing uh, Hutu and Tutsi, do you think that they were expecting that it's something that that could lead to um, a genocide? I'm sure they didn't think about it that deeply. Mm-hmm. They just needed something to reinforce the superiority of their perceived group, right? Like, so mm-hmm. then the Germans just needed to feel superior to the people who lived in uh, the countries that they colonized. The Belgians just needed to feel superior to the people that they colonized. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't think, like, that these divisions would, further down the line, cause, like, these kind of a genocide. But, no, they, I'm sure they didn't think about it that way at all. Mm-hmm. They might have even, like, I'm sure through their ignorant le- ignorance lens, ignorant lens, they still believed that they were doing real science. I believe that they knew what they were doing. Maybe um, it, it, if we can imagine it started like a study. Yeah. Because right? they were convinced. When you see all the effort that they were making, like, to. To, 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 to prove what they were well, uh, yeah, uh, at putting some in point, place. Like, that's uh, right. We can understand the, 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 the scientific whole Yeah, like you go. Needs to there's... research. But then <laughs> the thing is, then you see all the tactics, you know, um, they, uh, when he went in Belgium and he was talking about like a, um, the dividing to, to yeah. rain, you know, what right. they were doing in Congo, uh, in Rwanda and in Burundi. Yeah. That's where you're like, okay, that goes beyond just right. They've the crossed the line. Knowledge. Yeah. They were a clear plan yeah. to divide. Well, and, um, and suppress. And, and yeah, suppress. But I don't know if they were expecting that, um, people would be killing each other like like that because like uh, even in the, in that documentary um uh he he said that uh even uh, the inner the, the, the when they were uh, um uh killing Tutsi like they would ask for the ID mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right they would ask a person because themselves were not sure right because you can't tell because there's no difference <laughs> they were not sure they could not because <laughs> they could not be made up. <laughs> Like it, it just reinforces how made up it was, right? Yeah. Or the teacher who would ask to the kids, like, yeah. uh, what are you? Okay, you're going to go and ask your parents. Everyone like, who's Tutsi, stand up. Everyone who's Hutu, stand up. 
Yeah. yeah, and uh, and it's just it's just crazy. And as I was uh, telling you, like uh, 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 again, I it, it's something that's very emotional for me because um, uh, you know uh, Mugisha who was uh, giving his testimony, mm. uh, you know, mm. uh, at uh, the, at the event. Um, he's just like uh, one year uh, younger than me. You know, I could relate when he was, you know, everything that he was saying. Um, I could, you know, sort of remember where I was, you know, when he was telling like uh, what the age that he had, like he was right. 10 years old yeah. and um, he was 10 years old and um, had to flee, uh, having his uh, uh, little sister, yeah, his two-year-old sister, two years. Yeah, I was imagining myself like a, a two, like uh, having my little sister at that age, having to take care of her, having to flee. And again, it's pretty emotional for me because, of course, I have many Rwandan friends and I'm seeing their story. And it's it's just um, incredible, uh, like how things happen there. Mm -hmm. Like the genocide against the Tutsi of Rwanda is something that... I um, you know, I I salute all all the people who went through that and who are still alive. Yeah. And who keep you know living yeah. despite you know um everything that they are carrying because it's something that they will carry over and over. Yeah. Uh, in them and it's um, uh, it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But what shocks me. There are two things that shocks me, uh, that, that shocked me, um, uh, and especially um, this this year is thirty years later. Despite that, you know, they've been like all the process. You know, um, it's not themselves who decided that it was a genocide against the the, the Tutsi. It's something that went through the court. You know, a special court was put right. in place to judge like uh, um, those who did the, the genocide, and it's something that is. Um, even the 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 naming of that, you know, uh, you cannot play with it. No. But, hey, we are in an era of social media yep. where people can uh, uh, go anonymously, you know. Okay, we are so used to people saying nonsense yep. because they are anonymous, but seeing, like, officials yeah, now wow. coming and saying, like, uh, the Secretary of U.S., Coming and saying um, that the genocide, like uh, that, he's remembering all the Hutu, Tutsi, and and Twa, yeah. and Twa, who were killed, like uh, during the the genocide. You like, in what world are we living? Yeah, no, it's ahistorical, right? Like it's like saying, like, first of all, I mean, he's reinforcing the ethnic differences in mm -hmm. his statement, which are again we made up. These are not real ethnic differences. Yeah. And then on top of it, yeah, he's saying that the group that was doing the killing were acknowledging their losses as well, as though as though it was a genocide against all different kinds of people in Rwanda and not just a genocide aimed at a particular quote unquote ethnic group. You can uh, you you can think that it's something that they uh, that it's a, it's a mistake, but it's not. No. It's not a mistake. There is a need to go and just poke. The, the, the victims, the survivors well, of that. Yeah, it's to um, minimize them, right? It's to, to minimize, minimize their like losses. I'm, um, it's really something that shocked me because I'm like, um, how can that tweet stay like uh, 24 hours? Yeah. And it's dead and people are reporting it and he won't remove it. Yeah. He won't remove it. I was like, oh my God, I'm really shocked. Yeah, uh, of the, that's right. In that case, I guess um, it, it goes to what we've been talking about in the in the other episode, you know, um, uh, of our podcast. We were talking about um, believing the victims. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. how doing what you like instead of minimizing their their suffering, and their losses, believe their perspective and words accept them. matter. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, they're the victims. That like the the group that was called the Tutsis was the group. That mm -hmm. was victimized, mm -hmm. and despite the nonsensical notion of the di these divisions, mm -hmm. there was a group of people that had the word Tutsi on their identification that mm -hmm. was targeted. Mm -hmm. And it's not you can't you can't escape that fact. Yeah, you cannot be remembering like uh, the Shoah 
and saying that uh, you are remembering all the Germans who've been killed mm. during the Holocaust. Right, right. You cannot, you know, you cannot yeah, say right. uh, we remember all the Germans who've been killed or the Poland. Like, yeah, that's right. In in our Poland. Remembrance Day ceremonies, are mm. we are we doing remembrance of the German soldiers in? In that war? Are we remembering, like when it's uh, September 11th, are we saying that we are remembering all the Arabs? Right, all, all the all the people. Well, <laughs> not even Arabs. Like, no, it's, literally. It's like, nonsense. Like, yeah, uh, literally not even like the the Arabs, but like it's like literally saying like we are, we remember all the losses of the uh, people who hijacked the planes and, and crashed them into uh, the Twin Towers. Yeah. Because they're people too, so we, we respect their too. losses, they, right? Yeah, because they died. Why yeah, doing that? that's right. So we ignore the 3,000 people that were killed or whatever it was. I think it was more than that. But mm-hmm. uh, We ignore all those victims and we say, also, we're actually like, we're really going to, we feel bad for the people who were doing it. No, it's, um, and again... All it shows to me and is that, okay, there were a um, scientific need to understand if there are differences during the things. But when you see what came after during the colonization to divide people and to oh, yeah, install right. that thing, and then there is the genocide, you know, that they're, they're not coming to save the people and they have the, the you know, the men to yeah. go and help them. Literally. They didn't. Yeah. People had to go and fight for themselves. And then 30 years later, they're still there. Some people still there and the uh, train. I'm like, when will this stop? Well, it's clear that the world doesn't learn lessons. It doesn't learn at all. Like, it doesn't learn. Yeah, there's no, there's no lesson learned by, uh, you know, just the fact that there's so many, there's been so many genocides since then. And yeah. there's genocides going on right now. And mm-hmm. there's like, like we talk about Congo and, uh, M23 or, or what have you, like the, the, the people in Congo who speak Kenya, Kenya Rwanda. Ken, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. <laughs> like there's lots going on that's like, these are also attempts at genocide and murder. And like, yeah. We haven't learned any lessons. We as haven't world. learned at all, at all. And um, I, I empathize even more with the victims because like, yeah. you look, you know, back and you're like, okay, what happened to my family, to, you know, to my people, to myself and the, all the consequences of it 30 years later and the word is worse yeah. that it's like everything that happened to us doesn't matter that's yeah. what that the message yeah. really that is coming uh, out, out of there and uh, and it's something you know uh, what, what did we ask the kids when we came back home if they had learned about the genocide in Rwanda yes our at oldest school yeah we were like did you learn about it and uh, and it's like maybe a little bit maybe yeah but yeah, it's it's just. And I, I mean, I, I think about like like I've talked about this like while the guy who was giving his testimony the other day, like while he was escaping for his life with his do- sister on his back mm-hmm. at ten years old, that's that's the same uh, like literally those days that he was on the, the road escaping. I was turning seventeen and playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, mm-hmm. like. Like that's while I was doing what kids are supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. he was running for his life, mm-hmm. and that's and I didn't know anything about it, and no, like nobody in my life was telling me about it. And this is what even our kids gonna be uh, having. Yeah. In thirty years, they're gonna be with their friends who are gonna be from Palestine, from, yep. um, you know, from Congo, from they're gonna be saying okay. We were just kids at that moment, and what? We didn't know? Yeah, and nobody in our lives told nobody us. Nobody told us? It's, it's scary. But it's hopefully, scary. hopefully with social media, at least there's some level of awareness. You think so? I think, I think uh, some people. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, I thought that maybe people didn't know um, before the genocide. Maybe 
um, they didn't have the information. You know, when we saw what happened in uh, in Congo at that in uh, in Rwanda at that moment, for very long time we thought that it's because people had no way to know. Yeah, but. Well, we are in 2024. Yeah. Now we have internet, we have social media, we have people have smartphone, we have all the information. What is happening right now in the world? Well, let's go it's in not Sudan. Anything. Let's go in Congo. Yeah. Let's go in uh, Ukraine. Let's go it's, in. Yeah. You know. It's not stopping any of the aggressiveness and the, mm -mm. the military actions and the, the outright slaughter of innocent people. It's it's scary. Yeah. It's, it's not scary. good. And I guess uh, that's why we thought that um, we too, we had to talk about it because everybody should be doing what they can you yeah, know, to, right. to tell the word. And um, and yeah, we need to spread the words and, um, and try that this is not something that, you know, uh, going to be happening eternally. Yeah. It's not how things... It doesn't happen. have to. Like, that's the thing. Like, it doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. But there's systems of power there's people who have vested interests in keeping it going and i think the only way for people as a you know humanity to get better is to like for those who don't have power to collectively organize and, and you know do something about this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like i really i was reading a book about the bds movement around about palestine and, mm -hmm. and uh, israel and the propaganda that uh, Hutus were getting regarding the Tutsi people in 1994 and before the genocide happened is so much like the propaganda that the uh, people of Israel have gotten about the people of Palestine. Like the dehumanizing language, the just lack of education about the humanity that th of those that are being killed by their military. And... I mean, and uh, there's a slight difference, I guess, in the fact that, like, uh, the Hutu people were killing their neighbors mm -hmm. who were Tutsi. That they knew. Yeah. That it's people they there's know. A... It's not like, a, you know, uh, Israel, where they think about going to kill a Palestinian, you know. It's, it's, it's not they, literally their neighbor. They don't know them, yeah. right? They are just... Palestinian, they are like a, the way they're going to be called. They don't call them cockroaches, but it's almost, right? Or uh, we've seen so many IDF videos soldiers, of kids. Yeah, IDF soldiers do refer to them as, as like less than human. They do call them cockroaches and, yeah. and rats and shit. Like, it is it, like uncool. Like, it's super fucking like fucked up. <laughs> like, I don't have a good way to speak about it. <laughs> what do you think about um, the president of uh, Israel going to remembrance of the genocide um, against the Tutsi of Rwanda? I think that's fucked up. That right? shocked me. I think that's fucked up. That really shocked me. And uh, I'm still trying to get responses. I'm not hearing. I don't want to speak uh, for the uh, survivors. I don't right. want to speak for Rwandans. I'm really speaking from me myself like a you know yeah i'm shocked it's something that i was like how how is that possible because uh honestly there is something that shocked me um it was um that youtuber uh, i forgot his name uh but he's uh doing live videos and um, um well uh, it, i think it's on that platform how do you call it omega okay yep yes yep. um where uh, people can join uh, live and uh, talk to him and basically he's uh, um, they're like a, um, Israeli kids uh, joining him, he's from Palestine but lives in US and, um, and uh, they're like kids of 12 13, 14 yeah. years old and uh, they're like we want to kill, we're going to kill yeah I would love to go and kill Palestinian and I when I saw that, the moment I saw it, because like, it's something to imagine that, you know, um, it's a uh, military is going to attack, you know, that it's adults yeah. actually going on war. Right. But it's something else to see kids. Yeah. Like, if it was my kid, if one day my kid is think talking about another person, uh, another group of people. Yeah. Uh, saying that I would love to go and kill them, 
Yeah. I don't know. Um, as a parent, I'm like, what would you do? And that's, and you I'm wouldn't. Born. No more internet access. No more. <laughs> <laughs> I love the kid in like. <laughs> Like, I love yeah. the kid in the bedroom, and I'm like, you're not going out. <laughs> you can come out when you realize that people are human. Humans are humans. Yeah, we're and gonna, they deserve to live. We're gonna be talking, talking, talking until you understand, because like, the word is fact. Yeah, it's wow. Well, yeah, it's nonsense. So seeing the president of that country and knowing what's been happening. Uh, you know, uh, the colonization that been happening in, uh, it's not even the colonization, it's a genocide happening on Palestinian, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, like, yeah, it's going, literally a, a genocide attempt anyway, you know. Going th 30, 30 years, um, to commemorate the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi of Rwanda, I'm still trying to, to understand because I don't know, I, I know we know the relations, you know, um, between victims, you know. Right, um, yeah, yeah. So the Tutsi of Rwanda and the Jewish people. The Jewish people, yeah. you know. Uh, we can understand that, you know, yeah. um, that they will be more, uh, you know, close and uh, want to advocate, you know, and uh, want to teach the world but what like... happened. But I, I fail to see... Because the the the, the, um, the genocide that uh, was perpetrated against the Jewish people, it wasn't in Israel, right? No, it was in Europe. It has nothing to do with Palestinian people. No, that was just yeah. No, the Palestinian people didn't do the genocide against. It has nothing to no, do, it was, right? <laughs> it was Europeans, German Euro Europeans, mm -hmm. and I mean their cohort or whatever. There's people from other European countries that helped. But, but Palestinian alone said that any, 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 so I felt to, to understand. And, uh, we've been watching, um, today, uh, a part of the speech of the president of, uh, uh, of, yeah. of Rwanda, uh, where he was, uh, and I, I, I liked his response actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he was asked, uh, what he, um, he was asked if he's, uh, um, helping. Uh, the M23. Yeah, is, is do you uh, support M23? If you support M, yeah, M23 uh, in Congo. M23, for those who don't know, um, is a, a movement, a armed movement, um, uh, created um, uh, to protect and to defend the uh, population called uh, Banyamulenge in a uh, uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. And, um, because they were, uh, being like, uh, you know, uh, oppressed, killed and chased from, uh, from the country right, as not, if they are not yeah. enough Congolese. They are not seen as Congolese. Yes. So, so um, uh, the president Kagame, uh, say that, you know, stop asking me if I support, uh, that movement. The question you need to ask is, uh, why you don't support that movement, yeah. right? Because it's an oppressed where did this uh, population, you know, yeah. where did it come from, yeah. you know? Um, and, and why not support it? Because that's the question, yeah. right? Um, right? Is it normal that uh, a population of a country uh, would have to go and take um, uh, guns to defend themselves yeah. when they have, there is a police, the, there is the army, there are institutions of the uh, of the country, but yet none of those are protecting them. Yeah, they are dying. They are being, you know, uh, they're essentially being kicked targeted, out of the country, targeted, they, yeah. essentially because of who they are. Yeah, something they cannot just the way they were born. Yes. Um, when I was uh, listening to him, I was like, yeah, he's right, right? Why not support? Mm -hmm. Of course. But the question Stand I was with like, all oppressed people. Then what's the difference between the Hamas and M23? That's and that's where I was like... How does he... Well, how can he speak out of one side of his mouth saying, I support M23 or why don't you? And on the other side of his mouth saying, welcome Net President Netanyahu to mm -hmm. my country. Yeah, no, um, it's really something that shocked me. Uh, maybe we will get more uh, responses to it. 
uh, maybe it's not the moment to be asking that. Maybe, maybe. countries have, um, but I still don't understand. I still I have trouble. It's, I have trouble to understand I, it, that. I mean, maybe there's something that we're missing, mm -hmm. but it seems like hypocrisy to me. And you know me, I'm an anarchist. I see people with power mm -hmm. who abuse that power and use it to their own ends. And I see, despite the origins of Kagami's rule leadership in uh, Rwanda, I see a person who is a leader uh, at the top of a hierarchy. And that is a role that corrupts people and corrupts ideas. And it makes things, you know, so then you end up siding with power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as it serves you, you, you side with power. So it makes sense to me that he's, you know, uh, being hypocritical. As, as an anarchist, it seems re like understandable that a leader of a country <laughs> is being hypocritical. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I, I guess there is no, there are no clean countries, you know, because nope. uh, you would ask yourself, like, uh, then why were they like a representative of the, of the U.S.? Uh, you know, what were they representative of France? Yeah. No, Even though right. France took a there took is, part, but. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, so, literally. So like, why not Israel finally? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, like we were talking before too about like, uh, in the documentary, mm -hmm. like there were, uh, there was a woman whose daughter mm -hmm. married the son of a man. Yeah. Who had killed her, her mother, her family. That was so something. Like, yeah. Is it a, I'm still questioning myself since uh, that moment, and I'm wondering, like, uh, how am I good at forgiving? <laughs> I'm not that good. It's question. Like, I'm, I'm still questioning myself, and I'm like, am I a forgiving person? Do I forgive? Uh, is there someone who hurt me in the past? Right. Uh, but so bad but then later i forgive yeah i don't know and then there, there is a lesson that there is yeah. a lesson to be learned like uh of resilience that yeah. um but then also like way. uh you were talking about how uh there is still a lot of like resistance within communities when a hutu and a tutsi want to marry Mm -hmm. But when a person who's from Burundi, for example, wants to marry a Belgian, yeah, that's what came in my mind. <laughs> which was the colonizing country. That's what came, that's what came in my mind. Uh, my first husband was uh, was Belgian, and it, it, it never created any issue, yeah. right? And um, I saw many people from Belgium, you know, marrying uh, Burundian or Rwandese. And it's never like, uh, you people, like, how can you go and marry those who did that? You know, so in that way, that couple that we saw, that, um, story that we saw in that uh, documentary of, um, uh, the girl who married, uh, the son of a guy who committed genocide and killed the members of uh, her mom's family. I was like, yeah, me too. I, I, you know, I, uh, I was married to a Belgian. Right. Why, like, when my dad was born, the country wasn't independent. Yeah. We were still colonized by Belgians. There's many. <laughs> they were still. In, there's many indigenous people here who <laughs> are in relationships. Is it the same with... story? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I, 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 it's I slightly get, more um, removed, maybe, but. I, I never felt like a really. Uh, Burundian people are, are you know, uh, having like a sort of like a, a hate or even an idea of revenge or, you know, mm. even there is no accountability. It's like Belgians are our friends. Like you won't hear someone saying, how dare you uh, <laughs> <laughs> marry someone, you know, yeah. from the people who colonized obviously, us. Obviously, like to each their own. Some people are, maybe mm. they're wonderful partners. Maybe they... You know, they, uh, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. There might be wonderful reasons to marry that person and ignore the fact that they're from a colonizing country. Mm -hmm. But there still has to be some level of accountability on the state level, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. There is a lesson of uh, uh, forgiveness. Yeah. Um, that is forgiveness, resilience, 
Resilience. Honestly, um, each time, every year, um, when we're going through this, uh, uh, you know, period, because um, we we get every year, it's like pretty new, you know, because yeah. uh, we have new story. People who didn't talk before, who yeah. who is telling, uh, who are telling their story for the first time, and every year I question myself, and mm. I'm like, maybe they're built differently. Maybe I. I, I, I... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. There should be a school of forgiveness <laughs> that maybe I, their course, like their lessons of forgiveness, I haven't yet. There, uh, see, yeah, because I take it certain ways, right? Because mm-hmm. I was like uh, Dylan Roof down in the U.S. He shot up. I think I think that was the guy who shot up the the black church mm-hmm. down in the the states, and within a matter of days, like families of the victims were saying, we we prayed and we forgive. Dylan Roof. Mm-hmm. And I always felt like they didn't have, they weren't obligated to do that. They have, they are owed the time to be angry. Mm-hmm. They don't have to forgive. We don't have to forgive if we're not ready. Maybe it's something that is uh, so strong. When, when you are hurt, maybe I have no testimony in that way. You know? Yeah, uh, not me either. That's right. You know? So. Um, maybe. The pain Makes is you, yeah. so high that, you know, make you question, let's it's keep a, listening, um, yeah. let's keep listening to them and uh, learning from yeah. them. It, yeah. There is a huge resilience. And there uh, honestly, be, there must be a coping mechanism within the act of forgiveness that I'm not recognizing. Yeah. <laughs> we, we should be digging. Uh, okay. I, I'm asking myself like, a, you know, uh, who are the people who hurt me in the past? Mm-hmm. Like, am I, like, am, am I still mad at them? Because, again, I haven't got that same story, maybe. Or, uh, you know. Yeah, but, okay, so, but is there a difference between forgiving mm-hmm. or, like, you know, not necessarily being mad anymore or holding a grudge, but just simply not engaging with that person anymore. But they they have to engage with, with those people. The people yeah, who committed the genocide yeah, in true. Rwanda, there is no, uh, yeah. some of them have already finished their sentence. Yeah, so then they uh, have to, to be change. able to, so yeah. They are out. Yeah. Some are just being arrested right now, but yeah. those who were arrested at that moment, they finished their sentence. Yeah. For, so they need to live with, uh, you know, they share the country. Anyway, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's really hard. It's yeah. uh, w- we can just uh, we can only apl- applaud like when you see all the resilience that is behind. So yeah, uh, another thing that uh, um, that is feeling pretty different now for me um, with this uh, commemoration is um, the regional situation. Mm. You see, uh, we've been talking about like uh, again. What is happening uh, in the uh, Congo. Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo? Uh, it's it's a sort of genocide happening there, mm-hmm. and um, and Congo, Rwanda, Burundi. We have similar story. Yeah. Um, right before the commemoration in Burundi, they were uh, talking about: is it true? Is it false? About truck uh, trucks that have like a right. mach- of, yeah machetes yeah um which is which triggering it's triggering it's yeah. really triggering and uh i would i would have expected like a, a sort of like a, a message coming and saying like a, we understand that this can be triggering for right. people and we are investigating we are you know but all i saw was really insult yeah, so yeah, like it's the really who, uh, yeah. who 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 dare to ask uh, that question. So um, even if you ask, is this a real thing that's happening? Mm-hmm. Then you get, oh, it's just rumors. Shut up. It's, it's, yeah, shut up. We are so used to that. Um, all the years before the election, this this story coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, because we a lot of people, people are still here. You know, you see the same story. We are triggered. Like. Yeah. A, what are we going to do? Not be afraid? Right. Not be uh, yeah. 
Because we, yeah, of course. what? We're we gonna say that it happened um, in Rwanda, and also the same way of killing happened also in Burundi. So we also have that that story of killing, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and you like um, so what can give us the, 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 the you know the, the confirmation that this will never happen again yeah. you know there is nothing, nothing. yeah there is nothing, nothing except in fact, keep repeating yeah. and uh, reassuring people and showing you know being transparent yeah that, that, uh, well that's the thing you have to have a media apparatus that people can trust mm -hmm. you have to have a transparent government that people can trust what yeah you, like that's those are, if you want people to not worry those are mm -hmm. the things you have to have and as long as people are afraid and don't have accurate information, then there's a chance that they'll take up arms against their neighbors. Yeah, because they are Tutsi, because they are not in the same party. But yeah, for sure. Or so many other reasons, right? Yeah. Because they have money and other don't have it, you yeah, know, because right. finally... No, it's... What we understood is that... This is something that can happen, right? A genocide is not something that happened in one day. No. You know, well, it's, that it's, yeah, it's like, even that genocide was not the first time the Tutsis were harmed and killed no. in Rwanda, right? No. So this is something that uh, it's, it goes back mm -hmm. throughout pa the past and, and was, I mean, built by colonizers mostly. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. There's a huge... It was built by colonizers, but it was um, uh, executed yeah, by, by the people. The people. So yeah. it's something that can be there. And that we can, talked that can about happen this. again. Yeah. We talked about this the other day, too, is like some of the rhetoric that we see even around LGBT people. Yeah. Uh, like within our our own country, mm -hmm. of like Canada and the United States, like northern, northern western <laughs> countries that mm -hmm. are supposed to be like... Supposed to not want to hurt each other. Mm -hmm. We're quote unquote civilized, mm -hmm. but we fucking we're sitting here. The groomer rhetoric, the the rhetoric attacking LGBTQ people, attacking trans people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's dehumanizing language. It's used to incite violence against our neighbors. Yeah. It's and and the anti-immigrant rhetoric. It's it. People don't learn. They just the, continue to The word to didn't percent. learn, really. No. The word didn't learn. Um, we just perpetuate harm against each other. It's just yeah. absurd. Yeah. But, hey, that's why we're going to keep talking about it. Yeah. About it. We hope that if you watched until here, um, you know, tell us what you think about it. Again, it's an evolving situation. Yeah. Th that's... That's our view. That's yeah, the that's conversation right. that we wanted to share with you that we've been having regarding the um, uh, the remembrance. Yeah, it yeah. brought up a lot actually of thoughts in mm -hmm. in regards to a lot of the things that are going on in the world. Yeah, and like, yeah, it's just it it helped. I think people really really need to have a broader perspective mm -hmm. and view like through a historical lens and view things through like a, a lens of uh, just less myopic about your own country. Mm -hmm. Like, there's more out there than just Canada. And there's more out there than just the United States. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that are going on that maybe you could have some input in if mm -hmm. you have, you know, if you can organize. Yeah, yeah. And um, we need to understand that people can learn uh, to hate. Yes. And uh, be vigilant. Vigilant? Is yep, that a yep. We need to be vigilant we need and, to be uh, vigilant. Right. and uh, keep, uh, you know, learning even ourselves because hate speech is something that is that can come like a, in a hidden way. Yep. So it's important yeah. to keep. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't start off saying mm -hmm. calling people cockroaches. No. It's it come in so different ways, and um, we need to be vigilant and know that it's something that can be there, and um, to make sure that we are not participating yeah. in that. Yeah. We are stopping it when we see it, and we are understanding people who are victims. Um, it. Yep. Okay. So. So. Think. Uh, you think that's good? I think that's good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you very much. If you watched until here, thank you. Um, 
tell us what you think um and if you have any uh, topic you would like that we be uh, yeah, exploring we're open to... yes we are very open we post every two weeks yep if you didn't if you haven't yet subscribed this yeah. is the time to do it sure now leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. us a thumb up and uh, share with your friends and where can people find us on social media you can find me on uh, Instagram Pamela Kazekare uh, or um, Twitter Ikigata Nyakazi Donde Zamangete Ngete and I'm at Skeptical Lefty and pretty much all the places and uh, you can check out my website SkepticalLeftist.com mm-hmm.